Hey up there! I've got some good news today for all you owners of the Triumph Bonneville Bobber, Bobber Black and Speedmaster. After an epic development period of, I think it's about four years, I mean I was only a teenager when Sam at Motone Customs first showed me a sort of sketch of this particular part. Until now I've never actually seen one in the flesh, but I know Sam sent me several sort of pictures of prototypes that he was trying out. I know that he wasn't happy with them in the long run, and then probably for the last year or 18 months, everything just went quiet. In fact, I stopped asking Sam about it because I, I thought he'd just abandon the project. But as it turned out, the final prototype has been ready for about a year. Sam's been testing it on his Bobber Black. And I'll explain in a few minutes why that one year was so critical from his point of view. But first, I just wanted to revisit the Guardian indoor covers by Motone because I've had quite a lot of questions about them. I've also had two months using them, uh, you know, sort of experience to fall back on now. And these questions are still cropping up on a regular basis, so I thought I'll just tackle them at the beginning of this video before we get on to the Beltane leather battery box strap for the Triumph motorcycles. From what I can gather, these Motone Guardian indoor covers have been very popular. In fact, they've been so popular that there have been a slew of questions as to what other motorcycles they will comfortably fit. Now, if you remember back in March when I did the video on these, there are two specific designs. One created for the unique shape of the Bonneville Bobber, and one created for the standard air-cooled twins, the T100, T120, Scramblers, Speed Twin, etc. Now, the first thing that I want to tackle, and I thought I'd made this quite clear in the video, these are an indoor cover, not a waterproof outdoor cover. It is a really bad idea to cover a motorcycle indoors with a waterproof outdoor cover between autumn and spring, especially if it's an unheated indoor environment, because all that happens is that condensation builds up on the cold surfaces of your bike, and the cover holds it there throughout autumn, winter, and spring, which of course accelerates corrosion. That's why manufacturers design specific outdoor and indoor covers, right tool for the job. Now, with most indoor covers, I'd stopped using them because the cheaper ones will keep the dust off your bike, but they don't allow moisture to vent away properly. They're okay in a low humidity environment or a heated garage, but as most of us have unheated garages or sheds, again, they tend to soak up the moisture and just hold it there, which is almost as bad as having a outdoor waterproof cover on your bike. These dust covers are a dual layer construction and I can confirm having checked regularly during the cold months that although the outer shell is often quite damp to the touch, the inner shell is bone dry. These are doing exactly what they are intended to do. I am really pleased with them. So hopefully that's that aspect of these covers straightened out. Now, the big question that I've been getting asked, and I know Sam at Motone has as well, is will these fit the Classic 500, the Classic 350, with seat or without seat? Yes, I've tried them. The Bobber version fits the Classics without seat really well. Again, it's the unique quality materials and the design of these that just seem to make them mould to almost any motorcycle. And the standard Bonneville version will fit both of those models with the pillion seats fitted. And of course you already know that they fit the Interceptor and the Continental GT, a really versatile piece of kit. Right, let's get on. The built-in leather battery covers for the Triumph Bonneville Bobber and Speedmaster models. Now, I suppose it depends which sort of model you have and on the colour as well. These stainless steel battery straps have always looked a bit out of place to me. 
Especially on the Bobba Black, because the whole thing's sort of blacked out, and then you've got this bright stainless strap over the false battery cover. This whole setup takes its design cues from the externally mounted batteries dating from the 1920s right up till the 1940s, where the battery would be in full display on the side of the bike, and it would be held in place usually with a leather strap. And in all honesty, it's not much more than a cosmetic piece, so really I think they'd have been better leaving it out altogether. The whole idea of this is that you should be able to prise the battery cover away at the top because it's just held in place with two sort of plungers. A bit like you'd find on your average side panel. But this strap also hooks onto the battery tray at the bottom so all it really does is hold the cover tight at the bottom now in theory the way it's designed that with the strap still in place you should be able to prise the top of the battery cover away from the plungers and then just unhook the strap from the bottom and the whole thing should come away without you having to mess around with the fasteners. In practice that doesn't work very well and it works even worse when it comes to refit the cover. Over the years that I've been making videos about the Bobber Black I've lost count of the amount of people that have complained that they've either caused damage to the cover trying to get it off that way or the thought that they've got it hooked back on properly only to find that they've lost the strap and the cover's flapping about 100 miles down the road. So as much hassle as it is on the very few occasions that you have to get access to your battery you're better off just removing the strap. Now, Merton wanted to provide for Bobber and Speedmaster owners a traditional looking leather strap, something that looks the part. And they have two versions, a black leather version and a saddle brown leather version, both of which are a direct replacement for the OEM item, but as well as being predominantly leather, also have a stylish mix of brass and stainless steel fasteners. Now apparently what held the development of these parts up as well as Sam having about a hundred other parts in development at the same time was the fact that leather obviously can stretch if overstressed and one thing that you can guarantee customers will do they will over tighten them and they will stretch the leather strap which might leave it flapping around. So the extraordinary length of time taken up developing these and a year testing the actual final prototype, ascertaining what was the right type of leather, the right thickness of leather and the correct length to account for the little bit of stretch that might occur when you put your average Triumph owner into the equation. Now, Merton wanted this to look right, so they've basically turned the whole design upside down because the way that Triumph did it, to be honest, looks pants. So the actual fasteners are at the bottom with minimal stainless steel on view and just a smattering of gorgeous brass hardware, which will, in time, tarnish and mellow to match in with your other brass parts. The reassuringly thick leather has also been reinforced with a sort of a synthetic canvas on the back. Not just to limit stretch further, but also to give the leather some protection against long-term moisture that may get trapped between the strap and the battery cover. I'm not sure if it's a waxed or an oiled leather, but either way, it has been treated so that water isn't going to be an issue. And once fitted, the whole thing has the proper sort of rustic look of those originals. I honestly believe that Triumph intended doing something very similar from the outset, but obviously practicality and production issues got in the way, so they opted for the stainless strap in the end. Motone have of course made the black version because black is always popular with motorcycle parts, and as long as motorcyclists are riding bikes, they will always want black parts. But personally, I think the Saddle Brown is the one to go for. Just my personal opinion. It just has the right sort of vintage appeal and contrast without being too in your face. Whereas for me personally, I think the black just sort of blends into obscurity. It's just a personal thing. 
Now, do you remember in the old days where jeans went pre-shrunk? And they used to recommend that you sort of bought your jeans, put them on, and then sat in a lukewarm bath for two hours or something so that they would shrink to fit. These straps are sort of the opposite way around. And full disclosure, the first time you try to fit these, they're a bit of a twat knacker. Motone have purposely designed these so that the thread only just reaches the barrel that it screws into. And in both cases, it took me several attempts to get them on. I mean, to be fair, you would be better off with a shorter standard Allen key because I had a big T-handled version that made access a bit difficult. And once you've got it threaded and then tightened up, it will stretch the leather to the required size. So after that, it's really easy to take them off and refit them. And I would recommend that you remove the side panel from the bike when doing this because there's not an awful lot of clearance between the original straps and the side panel, let alone these. It just gives you a little bit more working space. Now, when you tighten them up, leave at least quarter of an inch between the two fasteners. Don't over tighten them, there's absolutely no need. Make sure that the bottom hook engages with the battery tray and the top hook engages with the top of the cover. There's a little cutout there for, to accommodate it. Don't try to attach the top hook to the lip on the bike itself. It's not intended to go there. And if you do that, you definitely will have trouble making ends meet. Over the years, sort of making these Motown videos, one thing I've become acutely aware of is that viewers do get very frustrated over the length of time it takes Motown to develop parts like this that people really want. Motown may not be the first to the game when it comes to creating a custom part for certain parts of bikes. But it's this attention to detail at the development stage and prototyping that ensures that unlike a lot of other parts that appear on the market very quickly, their parts are the very best that can be and they will in the long run give the customer the best long term experience. They're not in the business of just cobbling something together that will do in order to grab quick sales when a new model of bike comes out, which is why they've grown into the company that they are today. That's why I like working with them, because I know that the parts are going to be spot on, and I also always know that there will be minimal negative feedback from viewers, which is important for me running this channel. Now, I should add that they've taken great pains to ensure that none of the rivets come in contact with the plastic casing. They're all held away from it. That's intentional. And of course, all viewers of this channel get an exclusive 12% discount by means of a discount code, which you'll find in the video description down below. And yes, it's changing again this week because the old one had got into general circulation. This discount is for viewers of this channel, not just for Joe Blogs on Facebook. Now, Sam did warn me that the actual number of items that they have on the shelves are limited. I think there are more black than there are brown. The brown are likely to run out quite quickly. Well, that is providing people have got good taste like me. And I will, of course, leave a link to both of them in the video description down below. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos and in doing so helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. You could also support me further if you wish to by pressing the super thanks button and making a small donation to the channel. But even if you don't, I would really appreciate it if you would leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I will of course be back on Friday, so until then, if you're riding, please ride safely. And I'll see you soon.